I literally have so many chills right now. Oh my God, this is a good one. Let's read some Glitch in the Matrix stories. First and foremost, I love you. Your platform has given me so much validation. Thank you for creating this space. Oh my God, that makes me so happy. I love you too. To give you context, me and my husband are both pretty open to spiritual things and enjoy finding glitches in the Matrix and other anomalies in this world. There have been crazy coincidences in our lives that we feel like are proof that we are supposed to be together and exactly where we are. Needless to say, not too much freaks us out until my daughter was born. Ooh. Now on to the madness. This is like three stories in one because that is the only way any of this will start to make any sense. So let's start from the beginning. My husband is an only child and when we met, both of his parents had already passed away. When we were dating, I got really sick and went septic, which doctors say caused me to hallucinate slash dream. To be honest, I really don't know, but I do remember vividly meeting his mom and going to the beach. At the beach, his mom was telling me how she was always going to be there for our daughter. My then boyfriend and I were pretty serious at that point and talking about marriage and at the time, my oldest daughter was about 10 and had just recently moved in with my mother. My husband has called my oldest his bonus daughter since day one, and I chalked this all up to my mind, just letting me know that it was all going to be okay because me and my husband had no kids together and had only talked about not having kids. In a way, it was validating. During that same septic episode, I also kept seeing a dark figure in the room who was obviously not friendly, and my husband said that it was the only time he has ever seen me scared, as I often have dreams and experiences that are not normal. I can ignore a spirit, no problem, but this guy terrified me. Fast forward, COVID began, and of course, I became a COVID pregnancy statistic, LOL. We found out right about the pregnancy as we were packing to move across the country from Charlotte, North Carolina to Las Vegas, Nevada. This detail is important because we had no family or friends in the area, let alone that side of the country, when we moved no one. We found out that we were having a girl and joked about the one time that I was septic and saw his mom. I ended up having a pretty rough pregnancy and due to complications, my daughter was born about five weeks too early, so she had to stay in the NICU. The nurses were really worried about us, me specifically, because we did not leave her side for about two weeks straight. It was COVID and only one of us could go in at a time, but my husband worked, so I was there for 90% of the time. When I had to leave to even to go to the bathroom, I would put my mom on FaceTime to watch over the baby. I trusted no one and all the nurses would joke about it and remind me that they do this all the time and that parents leave their babies with them all of the time. I constantly explained to them that because of my delivery experience, I was not the most trusting of that hospital. Different story for a different day, but it's important to know. A nurse that I did actually trust from my delivery came by the NICU and explained that it wasn't healthy for me to sleep and be in that chair all day and night, especially because I was healing from a C-section. And she convinced me to leave to go at least get a meal with my husband and rest, promising that she would stay with my baby until I returned for peace of mind. My husband and I were gone for about two hours and when we got back to the hospital, he helped me back upstairs to the NICU and the nurse met us at the door telling us how we just missed his mom. She went on to tell us how his mom was so nice and so excited to meet her grandchild. She even joked about how I really didn't trust them, the nurses, and sent grandma to the rescue. While she is talking, another nurse came up and told us how she was also from Virginia and that she was glad his mom could come out to help us. Oh my God! They wanted to make sure that we all found each other because they assumed we would have bumped into her in the elevator. Remembering this is the height of COVID in the NICU, so only like two elevators were running to that floor and you had to go through two security stations and show your wristband to get in. By this point, we are freaking the fuck out because who was with our baby? We began grilling two nurses, visibly upset because we thought they let a stranger visit our child. We asked what she looked like and where she went. The nurses perfectly described his mom and told us a couple of things that they would never have known, like being from Virginia and that the beach sounds would be good for the baby because my husband was a beach baby. This is so freaking cool. All the nurses saw a ghost mom. She did promise. She promised she'd take care of the baby. The nurses seemed genuinely as freaked out as we were, especially because we already had tension with the hospital about my delivery and post-delivery care. Security and the lead nurse of the hospital and some other higher-ups came to talk to us, but nothing came out of it because we truly believed the nurses that they really believed it was her grandmother. By the way, they also checked the wristband scanner and it was my husband's band that registered this woman through security. Again, not much scares us, so we decided to take it as a sign of protection and a blessing for our little princess from her grandmother, even from the spiritual realm. In a way, we were grateful. That's exactly how I would have taken it. If that was the end of the story right there. I would have been blown away, but there is more. Let's keep going. My daughter is now three and a half years old and has an imaginary friend named Bibi, which we found canny because her grandmother's name was Betty. And all the kids in the family call her Bibi. Bibi has been around for about two years or so now and always seemed to be friendly. So it's never been a concern for us until last week. 
A year after my daughter was born, we moved out of the country to a little island in the Mediterranean, and Bibi, of course, came with us. Is this sweet story gonna turn? <laughs> Here's where it gets a little weird. My daughter started waking up in the middle of the night about two months ago, and we thought she may be going through sleep regression. I have trouble sleeping, and once I am up, that is it. So my husband is normally the one who hears her and gets up because he is the one who can fall back asleep, even though he is an extremely light sleeper most nights. This will be important in a minute. Even though sleep regression is normal, we still had a little concern because she wouldn't just wake up and come get in our bed. She would wake up screaming, saying she's scared of the man. She was also very sad about a month ago because she could not find BB. We couldn't explain it, but we assumed that she was just growing out of BB. Oh my God, where is grandma? Grandma, we need you. Last week, I woke up to my daughter screaming, get out. I remember thinking it was weird to hear her so clearly because my daughter has a speech delay and would normally have trouble saying something like that so clearly because she can't properly pronounce the letter G. Normally, it would sound something like nen now, but I heard it clear as day and it was her voice. Her panic scared me. I immediately jumped up and ran to her room, but when I got to her doorway, I felt like I could not go in. The crystals that we keep on the doorframe were on her floor and there was a woman sitting beside her bed rubbing her back and get this, my daughter was fast asleep like she hadn't moved since checking on her before going to bed. That wouldn't have bothered me as much but behind the woman in the corner of the room was the dark man who was in my apartment five years earlier in Charlotte. I'm sorry, my voice is getting so loud. I'm yelling, but this is crazy. The woman never even picked her head up, but lifted her hand as to shoo me away. Fear instantly took over and I could feel my body getting cold from the inside. I could not move. I feel like I was yelling for my husband, but he never came. Our apartment is two bedrooms and the rooms are only like 15 feet apart. After what seemed like forever, probably only 10 seconds, I was able to run into my bedroom and it took three or four times of yelling at my light sleeping husband to wake him up. He jumped up and ran into her room to see her sitting up saying, be me back and asking us for apple juice. <laughs> we refilled her cup with water, don't come for me, TikTok, and she rolled right over back to sleep. My husband also went back to sleep with no problem. I could not sleep and I was extremely anxious, so I whipped out the sage and went through the apartment telling whatever is here that it had to leave. Like I said before, when I am up, that is it for the day, no matter if it's 2 a.m. or 6 a.m., not to mention my spidey senses were tingling all over, so I decided to make coffee and sit in the living room so I could see all the doors and most importantly, directly into my daughter's room. When sitting on the couch, we can see directly into my daughter's room. So before sitting down, I made it a point to open her door and secure it to the doorstop to make sure that I could see her. I sat down on the couch and immediately her door slammed. <laughs> I jumped up and searched her room again to find nothing, but still feeling super creeped out. This happened two more times, which is impossible because again, the door was fastened to the stopper. I literally have so many chills right now. Anyway, I'm really freaked out even a week later. My daughter is again playing with BB and it seems fine, but there is just a really odd feeling I have. Something just doesn't feel right. I don't know if it's fear, trauma, or what is going on, but it has me replaying the past five years of my life over and over. Or who was at the hospital? What was in my room in Charlotte? Who was patting my daughter to sleep? And was that the same man or a different dark big man in her room? How was the door closing? Thank you so much for your time. I have attached a video and a picture of the door and her bedroom for context. And yes, I know I need to sweep face. <laughs> oh my God, let's check out the video in the picture. Hold on. Okay, there are actually two videos. So this is the first video. So that's her daughter's room. This is down the hallway. I guess that's their room and the bathroom. So we're going down to look at this. Look at the cute little baby potty. Um, and then this is the room. Okay. Okay. So this is the living room. That's where she had, must have been sitting on the couch to look in here. This is the daughter's room. And then this is, okay. So this is the door with the stopper. I wonder, oh good. She's going to show how it clicks. Okay. So it like clicks okay and she's moving it to show that yes like you set you staff fasten it why can't I say the word you fasten it and it stays okay so this is the daughter's room yes we see it's nice and fastened in there and it can't just like fling this is the second video so I think it's just a continuation of the video with the fastening of the door just showing again how it fastens um there's like a little piece there on the bottom I guess oh so it's like a 
it's magnetic. Okay, so it magnet. And this is just a picture just showing again like the fastener door. So there's like no way that this door could just be flinging open on its own three times. So I don't know what the dark man scary entity is, but I definitely think the woman that was at the bed and the woman that was in the hospital, I think all of that is the grandma. I think it is actually the grandma. She came to you in a dream and she said she's going to watch over your daughter and she is watching over your daughter really, really well. She came to see her in the hospital. She's been playing with her and I don't know where she went for a minute, but now she's back making sure that your daughter's okay and protecting her from this crazy dark entity. And the fact that she just like waved you away for you to go away and then you were kind of stuck there. I think she's trying to get you away from that entity too because I don't know what it is, but it is definitely bad news. But why did it follow you? Because you saw that thing when you were in a different place, right? And now you're in this apartment and it's back. It followed you. I wonder if it's attached to you or your husband or something that you guys have. Have you seen him or has your daughter seen him anymore since you have cleansed the house? I'm so glad that Bibi is there and Bibi is back and Bibi is watching over your daughter. I wonder why she went away. Do you think that she was like forced away by the bad energy? This is also crazy. This was such a good story. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and thank you so much for sharing. I'm Auntie Matrix and if you like stories like this, make sure that you follow me and you can send me yours too to this email address. We believe you.